So the tubular glomerular feedback system. The tubular glomerular feedback system is one of the two ways of autoregulation of tubular flow. So tubular flow is directly influenced by blood pressure. So an increase in blood pressure directly increases renal blood flow. And the two ways of autoregulating are myogenic control and tubuloglomerular feedback system. Myogenic is simpler and it mainly involves the smooth muscle vessels, the smooth muscle contraction of the arterioles, of the afferent arterioles. So myogenic system or myogenic response is to do with contraction or dilation of the arterioles due to smooth muscle activity. The tubular glomerular feedback system is all to do with chemicals that are produced locally. And the chemicals that are produced locally that are involved in this system are chemicals such as um, angiotensin or chemicals such as adenosine, which is going to be a derivative of ATP. So to understand this, remember that the, these feedback systems, the myogenic system and the tubular feedback system come into play when there is an issue with autoregulation. Autoregulation is a range over which the actual blood flow does not differ that much even when there is an increase in mean arterial blood pressure. So the, that's what the autoregulation range is. Now, in terms of the tubular glomerular feedback system, I already mentioned how the blood pressure directly influences the renal blood flow. And the renal blood flow then directly influences glomerular filtration rate. If the tubular flow increases dramatically as a result of increased blood pressure, this is going to increase these receptors on the macula densa cells. And macula densa cells are our sensor systems for this system. These are our sensor cells, and these will detect an increase in NaCl or sodium chloride. And this increase in sodium chloride will lead to a number of different things. So if we identify where everything is, where are these macula densa cells even found? So they're found in the distal convoluted tubule over here. And the distal convoluted tubule is something that actually loops around and comes back to where the glomerular capsule is. So once the distal convoluted tubule loops around and comes back to where the glomerular capsule is, the macula densa cells are almost touching the afferent arterial. And as they are touching the afferent arterial, because the distal convoluted tubule loops around and touches the afferent arterial, because of this, the macula densa cells are in close contact with different cells. They're in close contact with the afferent arterial cells. And in this region, you can also find juxtaglomerular cells. So this whole complex is known as the juxta juxtaglomerular app apparatus. This is a combination of the macula densa cells as well as the juxtaglomerular cells, as well as finally the glomerular mesangial cells. And the glomerular mesangial cells are the last cells, and these are actually surrounding the glomerular capillaries within the Bowman space. And those are the mesangial cells. But each of these have different functions, although they act in one complex called the juxtaglomerular apparatus. Now the macular densa cells, we already identified the function as, um, as receiving, being receptors to sodium chloride, whereas the juxtaglomerular cells are actually responsible for renin production. And renin, uh, sorry, they're responsible for, yeah, renin production. Now, if the tubular flow increases, then the sodium chloride that's being detected by the macula densa cells will increase. And the whole mechanism here is about, we've got ligands that are activated, and the ligands that are activated are ATP, which binds onto P2X receptors, and adenosine, which binds onto A1 receptors. And A1 receptors are found within the kidney, okay? So, but this is something really special. Adenosine binds onto A1 receptors within the kidney, whereas adenosine binds onto A2 receptors throughout the rest of the body. And this causes, um, in the rest of the body, adenosine actually causes vasodilation because they bound into different receptors, A2 receptors. Whereas within the kidney, 
or within these um, within the macula densa cells around this region, adenosine, well, it wouldn't be within the macula densa cells, but it would be around this region, within the lumen of the proximal convoluted tubule, adenosine binds onto A1 receptors. And here it will cause constriction. So production of ATP. When there are, there's a problem, there's a co-transporter here which brings in sodium, potassium, and chloride. And this co-transporter is what stimulates production of ATP. ATP gets broken down into AMP and then broken down into adenosine by an enzyme. This enzyme is 5-nucleotidase. And then adenosine will actually stimulate the afferent arterial to constrict. And the afferent arterial constricting actually completely reduces renal blood flow. And how does it re re reduce renal blood flow? It reduces the ultrafiltrate pressure and then it reduces the glomerular filtration rate, GFR. As well as afferent arterial constriction, this adenosine also causes efferent arterial dilation. And remember, it's not just adenosine. Once adenosine then binds onto its own A1 receptors, it stimulates production of calcium, and calcium, you know, is the thing that just stimulates muscle contraction. If we get a closer look at it, then the actual macula densa cells are literally in the lumen of the proximal, of the distal convoluted tubule. And these are in contact with the juxtaglomerular apparatus, which is then in contact with the glomerular mesangial cells within the glomerular, around, surrounding the glomerular capillaries within the Bowman space.